the presentation of anarchism, anarchism a social philosophy which aims at the emancipation, economic, social, political, and spiritual of the human race. The emancipation. Anarchist Essays is brought to you by Loughborough University's Anarchism Research Group. For more information on the ARG, see the link in the show notes or follow us on Twitter at ARGLBORO. Anarchism, Solidarity of Singularity and Mimesis by Ivana Inska. In this podcast, I would like to talk about one of the possible ways to understand contemporary anarchism in practice. My approach will be more philosophical, theoretical, and perhaps even speculative, and its aim is to allow us to conceptualize contemporary anarchist movements and to exit for a moment our usual patterns of thinking about these initiatives. So let's set the scene for what is to come. Contemporary left-wing activism has provoked a lively debate in recent scholarship on social transformation. At the turn of the 21st century, we have witnessed a sort of fusion of various left-wing social movements with differing agendas. The movements for women's liberation, black, indigenous, LGBTQ and animal liberation, as well as ecological, anti-nuclear and anti-war activist groups spoke out simultaneously against the global capital. How to understand what happened there and how to understand these radical political and social movements that have been proliferating ever since. The dominant, largely Marxist interpretations do not seem to fully capture the concrete operations of these heterogeneous initiatives. Some scholars have gathered these uh, movements under the umbrella term anarchism and have argued for a revival of anarchism in the 21st century. This seems to be a much more convincing approach than the Marxist approach. In these debates, scholars have turned to various concepts such as revolution, equality, emancipation, domination or democracy to understand these political movements. Even though such concepts are undoubtedly very important and excellent work has been done using them, it seems that such terms do not fully account for the diversity of these initiatives and they are perhaps limiting rather than enabling in our understanding of these political movements. You may oppose and say, well, isn't this too broad brush? And yes, to some extent it is. But let's consider one example of such a limitation. We could be thinking about these various movements for a category of domination by saying all that unites these movements is a resistance to domination of all kinds. And yes, to some extent this is true and domination as a category is without a doubt very important. However, if we consider, for instance, environmental concerns, such as air and water pollution, the perspective of domination seems somewhat awkward. It does not account for our relation to the environment in the most productive way, and it only offers to us a critical framework rather than a constructive or, if you like, affirmative framework that could invite us to think about viable alternatives to the status quo. So the question that we need to ask is therefore, is there a different philosophical framework that could help us understand the nature and the modes of operation of these diverse political initiatives? How could we describe the present day anarchist activism that would capture its amazing diversity? In this podcast, I would like to propose a philosophical concept and a theoretical framework that could account for contemporary anarchism in practice and help us understand its operation. The term that I would like to propose is solidarity of singularity and the supplementary framework is that of mimesis. I realize that these are somewhat big terms, but I will try to explain them briefly. Due to limited time, I will focus more on the key ideas rather than the concrete philosophers who help construct these concepts. 
However, on the website below, you will find all the necessary bibliographic references in case you would like to explore this philosophical framework further. So, what is solidarity of singularity and what is mimesis? And how do they help us understand contemporary anarchist movements? Part 1. Solidarity of Singularity The concept of solidarity is an important one for anarchism. It is usually associated with an active support one offers to those that are in the position of subordination and vulnerability, that is, persons or groups that are exploited, controlled, coerced and discriminated against. It is, however, less often employed in the context of beings whose very existence and the suffering does not count, that is, in reference to beings that are unrecognized or even unintelligible in a given society. In philosophy, one way to capture such unrecognized or unintelligible beings is through the notion of singularity. And singularity, in turn, can be perhaps best understood through two let's say, naturally accompanying concepts, but of universality and particularity. What follows now will be, of course, a somewhat simplified version of a long discussion on the interaction between universality, particularity and singularity in philosophy, but it will do. In brief, we can say that if something is applicable to all entities, it is universal. If it is applicable to some entities, it is particular. Everything else is singular, in the sense that it is both unique and unintelligible through its uniqueness. We can think of an example. The generic term animal would be the universal. The specific term elephant would be the particular. We should add, however, that we are not able to grasp the idea of animal without thinking about particular instances of animalness – elephant, tiger, hippopotamus or cat. What is implicit in this procedure is the negation of a singular instance of each entity. In order to identify an entity as a particular instance of a universal animal, its singularity needs to be negated in order for it to be named elephant, or even to a higher degree, for the elephant to be named a specific name, like Jumbo or Tina. In a specific cultural and historical context, certain categories are recognized and considered worth being abstracted from, like race, sexuality or nationality, while other categories are not recognized. Therefore, one's left with singularities. These are entities that do not share particular categories with any other entities and therefore they are banned from the sphere of a particular. They constitute a certain trace or a remainder from the particular universal diet. One can define singularity in this context as standing alone and invisible. One can treat it as an entity that is unrecognizable. Singularity is quite interesting because it is very difficult to capture. One could say that it is a flickering category, it is an instance that appears and disappears, at some moment it becomes visible and at other, other times not, depending on specific configurations in a given context. This lack of defined political place of enunciation makes singularity into a somewhat blurred concept. So what is this singularity good for? What does it have to do with anarchism? And how is it better than other possible conceptual frameworks, such as domination or equality? Well, the key advantage of singularity is that apart from accounting for the invisibilized humans, it can also accommodate non-humans. And in that way, it can lead to a non-anthropocentric conceptualization of solidarity, a sort of radical idea of solidarity with the non-human outside. Political and philosophical discussions around domination or equality often hover around human beings. However, in light of contemporary anarchist concerns with non-human beings, specifically from the environmental, ecological activist groups and anarchist circles, 
these concerns with non-humans need to be accounted for theoretically as well. In my view, solidarity of singularity is a concept that unites the efforts of different anarchist activist groups, be it environmental issues, the abuse of animals or discrimination towards the transgender. I would argue that it is solidarity of singularity, also beyond the question of the human, that is at the centre of anarchist concerns. Solidarity in anarchist practice, understood here in terms of concrete practices rather than a feeling of empathy or compassion, is immediately open up towards anything that is in need of solidarity, animals, the environment or humans. By rethinking the concept of solidarity in that way, it is also possible to give stronger support to the eco-anarchist aims and aspirations, also from a philosophical perspective. Part 2. Mimetic Cooperatives Rather than favouring a one-off, radical, disruptive event, a sort of revolution, anarchist practice favours a form of social transformation that happens every day by repeating practices that create more habitable environments. Solidarity of singularity is a useful concept, but it does not seem to be enough to capture the mode of operation of such anarchist initiatives as cooperatives, housing projects, autonomous zones. That is, it is not able to account for the idea of non-revolutionary form of social change that is so key for anarchism. In order to consider this non-revolutionary aspect as well, I would like to propose that anarchist collectives work with a tacit assumption that human beings are mimetic beings. What does this mean? And what does mimesis mean here? Mimesis is a very old concept, stretching back even to the pre-Platonic times. The term has had different conceptual constellations in different historical periods. The version that we are going to use here is one that considers mimesis as a form of imitation, a procedure whereby a human being imitates, wittingly or unwittingly, the behaviour of another person. Simply put, the basic assumption is that we exist in a world populated by models to be imitated. These models around us perform norms that they previously mimetically acquired by being in direct exposure to other people, just as we mimetically acquire norms and behaviours by being exposed to our models. Because we are born into an already populated world and our entire socialization happens for an exposure to other people, we basically cannot exist without having imitated others. Now, what does it have to do with anarchism? A constant negotiation between this incessant, almost mechanical, mimetic repetition of available models and an attempt at channeling mimesis into a particular direction is an angle from which we can consider anarchist collectives. Such a directed channeling of mimesis can be considered in terms of mimetic training that anarchist cooperatives mobilize. So mimesis here and mimetic training could be defined as a directed bodily repetition of available models. As we know, the greatest part of ongoing activity in the anarchist organizing takes place on a micro level of affinity groups and various collectives. Such collectives are based on cooperation, solidarity and community and they can be either more permanent, like establishing a housing project, a publishing house, a co-op farm, or less permanent, like a short term coming together for the purpose of one activity, for instance, guerrilla planting of trees in an urban space. Such groups can be understood in mimetic terms as a form of collectivity whose aim is to create an environment where good habits are trained and reinforced. Housing projects, squads, cooperative farms, autonomous zones are structures that provide mimetic models for imitation and train habits of its participants. These, let's call them here, training camps, 
give support to the ones in need of solidarity and also create models that will, it is hoped, infect adjacent spaces and so will spread the contagion of change. The idea is that a practice would catch on and create a habit that people would keep in mind and embody by default. In its practices, anarchism actualizes the assumption that humans are mimetic beings who build and share spheres with other entities in the world. Because one is already an active mimetic being that establishes habits for repetition, social transformation is a question of directing one's mimesis. It means directing it towards habits that improve the spheres we inhabit, not only for ourselves, but also for other humans, animals, plants, the natural environment surrounding us. It means directing mimesis towards solidarity with the oppressed and the unintelligible. Anarchism realizes this intuition about human beings as mimetic creatures and their inextricable relation to the surrounding world. That is why contemporary anarchism practice can be viewed as an effective form of harnessing mimesis towards a more habitable world. To conclude, the combination of these two conceptual frameworks, solidarity of singularity and mimetic training, offers an alternative structure to the usual philosophical model that scholars use in order to describe anarchist collectives, that is Jules Deleuze and Félix Gattari's Rhizomes. Although rhizomes are a powerful image, they emphasize the network links between entities rather than the spaces in which these entities are embedded. And spaces which anarchists create through the practices in which they inhabit are crucial for understanding contemporary anarchism and practice. Although it is arguable whether anarchism is in need of a single umbrella term that gathers together its diversity, I would nevertheless suggest that solidarity of singularity in a mimetic framework could be such a concept. The aim is here to proceed from practice to theory rather than from theory to practice. Basing on what contemporary left-wing activist collectives such as housing projects, cooperatives and autonomous zones offer us in terms of actual political practice, we can translate these efforts into a conceptual framework in order to understand and support the efforts. Thank you for listening. To help others find Anarchist Essays, please rate and review us wherever you find your podcasts. And if you're interested in anarchist ideas, why not check out the journal Anarchist Studies? For over 20 years, Anarchist Studies has been publishing original research on the history, theory, and practice of anarchism. For more information, visit www.lwbooks.co.uk forward slash anarchist studies.